a lot of drama surrounding quarterback in Cleveland right now, which you know we should be used to considering our history. Um, obviously, there's stuff that just dropped just as I was on my way in today with Baker requesting a trade. I want to rewind and then just go back to the beginning and kind of go from the beginning. Our thought, you know, what we've been thinking since we found out the Browns were going to meet with Deshaun. Guys, I don't understand like this sky is falling mentality just because the front office is looking to upgrade the team. That is literally their job is to upgrade. And I know in the, the Baker fans at this point, it's almost a cult. <laughs> it, yeah. it, I'm, I'm convinced some of these people would let Baker their wives. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's crazy. <laughs> it, you can't, I said, he's the one player on the Browns. You can't criticize. I have talked crap about miles Garrett on this show and yep. nobody has said one thing to me. Not one. I haven't gotten any negative comments about that, about miles Garrett, the arguably the best player on the Browns, mm -hmm. him or Nick Chubb. And, but I can say something like, you know, Baker isn't elite and it is a <laughs> storm on me <laughs> for hundreds of comments. It, it, it is a cult guys. Oh. It is not that big of a deal for your team to be looking to upgrade the team at every single position. That is what they are getting paid to do. Yep. And, and we were, the Browns front office was up front with Q uh, Baker's camp at the combine. I was just listening to the radio on the way in Jake mm -hmm. Trotter, very trusted source for Cleveland said they were very upfront with Baker and his camp. If a top tier quarterback came on the market, that's who they would talk to. They weren't going to go sniffing around everybody, but if somebody that, that was considered elite, a Watson, a Rogers, a Russell Wilson became available, they would be they would be doing their due diligence on those players. Yep. That's that's all they that's all they owe you. Yeah, I think, mean, I mean, think about this. Imagine, and people are like, you just don't do this to the guy who won you your first playoff game, guys. That it doesn't matter. Just because he is better than what we have had doesn't make him great. Doesn't make him good. Right. I mean, you say it all the time that the, the goal every year is to win a Super Bowl. It, if, if your goal is not to win a Super Bowl, you're not going to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If your goal is just to be, well, you know, we used to only win three games a year. It's great that we're winning seven or eight. Then get ready to win seven or eight games every year because yes. that's all your goal is. You have to have higher goals. You're, you're, how are you gonna How are you gonna reach Super Bowl if you're just hoping to get eight wins? Yeah, I, the one of the best analogies I heard was on the radio on the way in. Gerard Cherry was like, you know, you've been driving beaters your whole life, muffler dragging on the ground, and you finally get enough money and you go buy like a 2005 Cavalier. That doesn't mean your 2005 Cavalier is the nicest car on the market just because it's the best car you've ever had. Yeah, and if the opportunity comes up to get something nicer, you're gonna get and it, it's a, and it's within the realm of possibility and you can afford it, guess what? Get it. You're going to get it. Exactly. It was one of the best analogies I've heard as far as this situation goes. Imagine if a top tier left tackle came on the market, say Trent Edwards was available and he was looking to go somewhere in the Browns met with him. Would you guys be like, how could you do this to Jedrick Wills? <laughs> you he solidified the yeah. left tackle spot and to helped us to the best season we've had in 26 years. How could you do this to him? No, you would be like, go get Trent Williams. He's one of the best linemen in the league. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, guys. They is, And it's not just Baker. I said it a bunch of times. If we didn't make the playoffs, there was going to be major changes. J.C. Treader's not on this team anymore. Jarvis Landry isn't on this team anymore. Hooper's not on this team anymore. Yep. You don't only win eight games with that roster and then think you're just going to come back and get to do it again. And we are. I, okay, I guess I can't say we all did, but I'm hoping that everybody watching this, listening to the show right now, watched the Browns last year. And if you watched the Browns, guys, you saw what the problem was out there. Yeah, it, We all saw it. We saw the defense holding teams to 15 or 16 points and us still losing. Yes. We saw Nick Chubb dom being dominant in the run game again, and we're still losing. There was one aspect of the team that was absolutely horrible. And that's why another people are like back to the quarterback carousel. Only yeah. going to win two games, guys. Relax. We won eight games 
was statistically one of the worst quarterbacks in the league last year. Yep. He was only better than three quarterbacks. So he was the 27th best quarterback in the league, 28th, and we won eight games. Mm -hmm. So the sky is not falling in Cleveland just because there's problems with Baker Mayfield right now. Two, the fact that now he he's just a drama machine. So you heard the, the report that came out that said uh, they want an adult at quarterback. Ooh, yep. And that sounds mean. And, uh, you know, that maybe that wasn't supposed to get out. But I told you guys there was problems behind the scenes, and they didn't – they were tired of them. So – he releases, first of all, who writes a goodbye letter to a team when they're still on the team? <laughs> you know what I mean? That was just another, yep. Justin's not here today, but even Justin was like, geez, ow. Well, before you continue with the saga here, let me just interject and say that when that came out that they said, you know, that they wanted an adult at quarterback, ever since that came out, Baker Mayfield has done everything an adult would not do. Correct. So go ahead and continue. So in Justin's is pro, I mean, Oh, brown yeah. and optimistic and is anybody I know. And even he saw it and did the biggest eye roll. Like my God, dude, <laughs> like I, he, like he said in yep. his, you know, 30 plus years of life, he's never seen somebody write a goodbye letter to a team when they're still on the roster. Jimmy G just played a full season for the mm. Niners after they traded Lance and told Jimmy G he's not going to be the future. You're not the guy. Yeah. Tua has been dealing with questions about his status since he was drafted. He literally had to split snaps with Ryan Fitzpatrick. For the last, what, year and a half, you can't even, you can't look up the name Deshaun Watson without reading something about the Miami Dolphins being interested or all in on Watson. Matt Ryan is the best quarterback in Falcons history, probably. Him or Vic. Okay, he's a legend there. MVP took them to a Super Bowl. He is the son-in-law of the owner. (laughs) That's crazy. They still brought in Deshaun Watson for a meeting. Yeah. Like, this is the NFL. If you're not doing everything you can to improve every position, then you're not doing your job. Yes, and we talked about Jimmy G as the perfect example of this. I mean, the 49ers mortgaged part of their future to move up and get his replacement in the draft last year. And what did I, I didn't see? No one saw Jimmy G go to Instagram and post a, a farewell letter to San Francisco or, you know, uh, request a trade or anything like that. What did Jimmy G do? Took that team to the almost to the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's leadership. That's being confident in yourself and saying, okay, fine, you draft that guy. That's, that's great. I'm still here and I'm still going to play. Yeah. It's just, it's incredible to me. And, you know, and it's not just us saying this. Draw Cherry on Cleveland radio was really hard on Baker, and he's never hard on anybody. Uh, Darius Slayton, or not Darius Slayton, uh, Darius Butler, I I was watching something with him, and he was like, listen, it's okay to be mad, but you have to also at the same time compartmentalize and realize that's part of the business. Yeah. So it's human. Yes, I would be upset too if I was Baker. Yeah, and Jimmy G was upset. Yes. And Matt Ryan's probably not thrilled that he's going to get upgraded in, in yes. Atlanta. But and Tua was probably not pumped that he was splitting snaps yeah. with Ryan Fitzpatrick yeah. and having to hear Deshaun Watson's name every other day. It's, not, it's okay to be upset. Nobody thinks that Baker Mayfield should just be happy that the team is looking to upgrade his position. It's how you react to your emotions. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are like, well, if I was Baker, I'd have done the same thing. You're not the face of a billion-dollar franchise. Part of the paycheck for quarterback, whether you like it or not, is your maturity level, your ability to handle these kinds of things in a mature, adult way. So we heard you know, all season long, and we talked about it every time these reports would come up that there were – uh, uh, di- what do I want to say? Disconnections or whatever in the locker room. And we're like, well, what, what is going on behind the scenes? Cause we didn't hear this in years past that much. And and now I, I like I said, his added, his shtick, his bravado of it's me against the world. Right. It wears thin quick. If it, you know, it's great if you're winning, but if you're not, it wears thin real quick. I mean, it's it's kind of this way in every aspect of life, but even more so in sports when you've got such a tight knit and you're on a team, you know, and everybody in there is sacrificing their 
their time, their energy, blood, sweat, and tears for this sport, for this team. And if you've got a guy who is making mistakes and won't own up to his mistakes or won't accept any responsibility or any accountability, especially when he's supposed to be the leader of the team, that doesn't sit well with people uh, on the I, team. I, like I, uh, I was listening to the radio on the way in, the word they used was entitled. Yeah. He, he just seems like, you know, it's almost, it's never Baker's fault. Odell wasn't running the right routes. Stefanski's not calling the right plays. You know, it just, it just wears thin. And, then he goes to request this trade. And here's the thing is I'm pretty pro player in the fact where I don't necessarily have a problem with him requesting a trade in the sense if the team is allowed to go look and upgrade, then the player should be allowed to go do what they think is in their best interest. It's a two-way street in my opinion. It this, but if you want to be looked at as like, you know, the leader, yeah. all we ever hear is how Baker is awesome with his back against the wall. So what better way then would be to come back and ball out this year and be like, see, you never even should have thought about upgrading me. Yep. You know what I mean? So um, it's just, I don't know. The, the, and then you've, he tells the Browns he wants traded. They tell him no. So he calls Adam Schefter. Well, it's hey, just, and it's the second time you're, he's you're done missing one like little this. step in there that I want to throw in real quick. So we, we learned early this morning or earlier today that the Browns were out of the running. They were told, you're out of the running for Deshaun. He's not coming. I don't know if that came from him, his camp, whatever. They said, mm. you're not coming. So then the report came out. The Browns say, well, we're not done with Baker Mayfield. We're still moving forward with him as our quarterback. Yeah. Is it we were exploring options? Yep. So Deshaun was out of the picture. So now they say, well, Baker's still our quarterback. Obviously, he's on the team. And that's when Baker said, no, 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 I want to trade. And it was like, dude, <laughs> couldn't you just, I don't know, just let it play out. So Jake Trotter said he originally thought – um, that the the well, first of all, the Browns said no. Now I think that there's, I I think there's almost no way Baker is the quarterback next year. I think they said Very no. Little I said percent. I think they said no to keep his value high. So you know we we fleeced the Cowboys for Amari Cooper because we knew he was, he was going to be available anyways. Yeah. The best way to keep Baker's value high is to be like, no, he's our guy. We want him, and then you know, people aren't offering us fifth round picks for him. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so, but I think we're moving on from, I think we were moving on from him regardless. Even if Deshaun Watson never became available, I still think we were going to try to move off on from him. And there's reports, you know, saying that. Join the action on the court during the biggest tournament of the year with DraftKings Sportsbook. Turn your team's victory into your own big win. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. It's that simple. If they win, you win. If the sportsbook is not yet available in your state, you can still join the College Hoops action with DraftKings Pools. Everyone can play free pools all March long for a shot at a share of over $250,000 in prizes. Simply join a pool and answer questions like who will make it to the next round and who will hit the most three-pointers, then track your results. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TPPN. Bet $5 on any College Hoops team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win... You win with promo code TPPN this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. Jake Trotter said he thought if we got Watson, we were going to work with Baker as far as where he wanted to go. So, like, if he was like, hey, I'd like to go to Indy, we'd be like, okay, we'll try to work a deal with them. Now, ship him to Seattle. Well, and get him out of the AFC. Yeah. Could you imagine if he... Uh, I guess the Seahawks, uh, first of all, I don't think a lot of teams are going to line up for him. I don't think so. The, this is This tells you what the league thinks about Baker... We were, in order to be able to talk to Deshaun, we had to first present our trade offer, and they had to accept it before we could even talk to Deshaun. Yep. They did not want Baker. Yeah, they were they were ready and, like, excited, essentially, to move forward with Davis Mills as their quarterback. Over Baker. Over Baker. So what, how, a they former would number over one picks, guy yeah. who was from Texas. Yeah. So to bring the hometown kid home, and they were like, mm, we're going to roll with Davis Mills. Yeah, so that's just give us draft picks. That's yeah. all we want. We're we're good with Mills. They, you're right because they didn't see Davis or Baker as an upgrade over Davis Mills. Correct. So they'd rather have draft picks and just roll with Mills. Correct. Because Mills might actually develop into a a decent starting quarterback in the NFL. You don't know. And you know, I pose this question to people: If we say we were to release Baker today, just release him, mm -hmm. how many teams are lined up to sign him to be their starter? They're like knocking on the door, like we want this guy. May honestly, maybe Indy. 
just because they don't have one, and maybe, maybe Seattle. Seattle. The two that were already in the trade talks or discussion about them. Yeah, I, I can't really think of any other teams that would be in the, the running to come get them. Mm-hmm. First, and so that tells you what the league thinks about them. So that's why the Browns were trying to upgrade. Yeah. And I, I saw these stats. Um, if I don't know of any Browns players, because we mentioned Mitch Trubisky a couple times, and people were like, no, he sucks. Mitchell Trubisky's 29 and 21 in his career. Baker's 29 and 30. Mitch Trubisky has a 64% completion percentage. Baker has a 61. They have almost identical touchdown to interception ratios. Baker has more touchdowns, but he also has more interceptions. The ratio is almost identical. Okay. And they have uh, almost identical passer ratings. Mitch Trubisky's is 87. Baker's is 87.8. <laughs> okay. So for all the Browns fans who are screaming huh. about Baker's the franchise and he's the best, and he, I had people literally arguing with me that he was better than Deshaun at football. If you didn't want Deshaun for who other argued reasons. argued that? If you didn't want Deshaun for other reasons, okay. There's no way you can convince me you actually think Baker is better at football than Deshaun Watson. And then in the same breath, you would probably turn around and tell me that Mitch Trubisky sucks. So the Browns aren't demanding three first round picks plus other picks and players for Baker Mayfield. <laughs> no, That's what Deshaun Watson's going for. Yeah, I think if we get a first for Baker, that'd be, I don't think that's going to happen. It's not going to happen. I think if, if we can land a, a decent second round pick for Baker, that's a win. That'd be awesome. Yep. Be great. Carson Wentz just went for two thirds and he just went 27 and seven. Yeah. Yeah. He had a much better year. Yeah. So, um, I just, I don't understand the sky is falling. We're going to go back to the same old Browns. No, our team is still good. We're still a top 10 roster. Mm -hmm. We still have a guy who was coach of the year. We still have one of the best lines in football. We're, we upgraded the wide receiver room. We are better at wide receiver than we were, you know, four days ago. So I don't understand this. It's so it sucks to be a Browns fan, blah, 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 blah. I just don't, I don't get that. I don't understand it at all. Yeah. I was talking to some people yesterday and and just of course talking about Baker and Deshaun and, and you kind of get, I understand where Browns fans are frustrated with seeing all these other teams with quarterbacks. We are too. And it's and I understand that, oh, well, you know, we took Baker number one overall. He, we just need to keep him as the guy because you don't want to see that rotating door quarterback again and again and again. And I know it's been tough for the last 20 plus years watching that happen. But I'm sorry, guys, it has to happen again because well, you can't just you can't just settle for mediocrity because you're tired of the door turning. It's got to keep turning until you get the right guy. Yeah. And, and we're not the same free. I know it, it, you people are screaming this. It's not the same franchise it used to be. Correct. We are in a way different place than we ever were. We have way more talent in place than we ever were. Our front office is way more aligned than it ever was. Yes. Like, we're way different. Um, So, before we then wrap this up, so there's a few quarterbacks potentially available if we end up do trading Baker. I would say possibly Winston. um, That's Jameis Winston. uh, Possibly Jimmy G. Possibly Matt Ryan. And then number one on my wish list, and it's it's probably still far fetched, but I don't know why I'm holding on to hope for this. Is <laughs> Derek Carr? Yeah. Who would you want if you had to get one of those guys? Okay, so if those guys were all possible options, I would take Derek Carr first because I think that Derek Carr on this team is playoffs, Super Bowl possibility. He's already played with Amari. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Derek Carr is criminally underrated. For sure. And I think he's a great leader. Um, he's a great competitor. And he's just, when you watch him on the field, I, he's not the most flashy or the you know most overly talented quarterback I've ever watched play football. But man, when he plays, he plays so well. He can move. He can make the throws. He's, he's a good leader. Leads, I think he leads the league in fourth quarter yes. comebacks. We Literally, saw that last year. Like the anti-Baker. Baker in the fourth quarter when we're losing is the worst quarterback by a lot. Yeah. So as far as trade, I mean, I know like Ryan would be a trade unless they cut him. Mm-hmm. And so best same, case scenario is Watson goes to there and they have to get rid of him. Yes. And the, okay. So for me though, taking trades off the table, I I'm in the Jameis Winston quarter after our discussion, a couple episodes ago and just doing some more research into his stats and kind of, you know, his career that he's had, 
I think he's an underrated quarterback. I really do. And if you guys missed everything we talked about with his stats, go back and watch that. It, we even have like a short out there about it. I mean, his stats are actually really good. He, he had one of the best rookie seasons of all time, over 4,000 yards and 20-some touchdowns. I mean, it was great. Yeah. Low interceptions. So Jameis Winston can get it done. We saw last year in New Orleans, he was he had, I'm trying to remember, like over 1,000 yards. What was it? 14 touchdowns, three picks through seven games. Mm -hmm. He was five and two with that garbage New Orleans roster yeah, last year. At least on offense. Yeah. Their, uh, defense yeah, their offensive really roster was awful last year. So if Deshaun Watson, which right now it looks like, at least from what I read last, he's leaning toward the Saints, or the Saints seem to be in the driver's seat of this thing. That does give Jameis Winston, I don't want to see him go to the Colts. No. I'd like to see him come to the Browns. I agree. I agree. My thing with what, if you could trade for Carr, then that's a long-term solution to me. I take, you know what I mean? Yes. I think the rest of these guys, Jameis, I think Jameis G, could, could, be could be long-term, but it's a risk. But you wouldn't sign him to that initially. Correct. I think Jimmy G, uh, yeah. Jameis, and Matt Ryan, I'm perfectly fine with either one of those three as a year stopgap. Because if yeah. you look at the free agents going into the, the following year, there's more free agents that are going to be available, and the draft class should be better. So yeah. if we have to, and people screaming about, you know, they're not upgrades over Baker. Respectfully, yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah. Um, and Jimmy G, if, like if it's Jimmy G, he can, he can get us to, is he going to, Win us a Super Bowl? Could he? Possibly. He almost did. Well, that's once. the thing is, how could you say that, you know, Jimmy G's not an upgrade? He could easily take the Browns to at least the AFC Championship game, if not a Super Bowl. He did it with San Francisco. He's done it before. Yeah. He can do it again. So, um, you know, Matty Ice had his best season ever under um, Shanahan. We, our systems aren't identical, but they're similar. Mm -hmm. Run first tight ends, that kind of thing. Yep. So I think he would be good in our system. I think Jameis would fit in our system. It's an easy system for quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, so those are, I think those are the options other than unless there's somebody in the draft, they identified as somebody they want, which I'm hoping not because I want to go receiver. <laughs> yeah. We need those <laughs> weapons. We do. But I think those are pretty much the options that are available. Um, we'll see what the Browns do. They, they said they're staying with Baker. Jake Trotter said, He'd be absolutely shocked if Baker's on the team next year. But he also said he doesn't think that this is just going to be done tomorrow. Like, this could drag out a couple weeks. Well, I think everybody's waiting to see what happens with Watson. Yeah. Kind of see where the how the pieces fall from there. Because, I mean, the ripple effect of if he goes to Atlanta or New Orleans, it's, it's different both ways. Yep. So, yeah, that'll tell you who's available. Because if he goes to Atlanta – Jameis is probably going back to the Saints. Yep. You know, and then if he if he goes to the Saints, Matty Ice is probably staying in Atlanta. Right. And just because he goes, if he goes to Atlanta and Matty Ice becomes available, we still, I mean, the Colts are trying to get, they need a quarterback. Yep. They've got a very good team. They're just a, a good quarterback, a decent quarterback away from really competing. And the Seahawks. Now, I did hear, I don't know if this is true, I heard that the Colts would be willing to give up a first round pick for Baker. If that is true, I'm on the phone right now. Because where are they picking? It can't be true because Baker's still on the team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, because if that was true, I mean, they're picking probably around where we're picking, right? They didn't make the playoffs. No, they didn't. No. They uh, should, they're probably a little – they had a better record, though. So, Did I they? mean, it, they, they got to be in like the 13 to 16 range, somewhere in there, right? What could we do with two picks in that? You know what I mean? Wilson and Olave. Yeah. So, yeah. something, you yeah. know, him and a de another defensive guy. Um so if that's true, I don't know if they'll do it, but I would make that. The only thing stopping it is maybe they don't want to send him to an AFC team, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not really worried about that. The Colts are picking. Where are they at here? Da -da 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 -da. The Colts do not have a first round pick. No, so that was a lie. Unless it was like a next year first round. Okay. Philadelphia has the Colts first round pick and it is 16. So you're right about that. Okay. It's just not theirs anymore. Well, let's call Philly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, so we'll see what the options are going forward. Relax, pump the brakes, Browns fans. The sky's not falling. We're still a top 10 roster. We still have a returning coach of the year. We still have a Hall of Fame offensive line coach. We're fine. 
we are fine. We were returning a top five defense with the exception of Cl- if Clowney doesn't come back, almost everybody else on this defense is c- all the important pieces are back. Mm-hmm. Um, the offense, the, whether you want to admit it or not, the pass game should be better with Amari Cooper. Even if it's Baker back, I would say that it's going to be better because he's a great route runner and a great receiver. Yep. Um, we still have a top three offensive line. Calm down. Just because if Baker's gone and we have to roll with Jimmy G for a year or something does not mean we're all of a sudden going to be a three-win team. Yes, everybody take a deep breath. I know there were big splashes made in free agency this week, but if you look at it, the big splashes were in positions that the Browns don't need to make big splashes in. And we read the list of defensive line options that are still out there. It's long. There's a lot of them. And And we still have a draft coming up. Yes, which we're going to be getting into here in the coming weeks. Yep. So so take a deep breath. I know it's been a lot of drama. The sky is not falling. If you're one of these super big Baker fans, I understand that this is a tough time for you. Relax. It's I, going to be fine. And I get it because I was too. I was. I loved Baker. I was all in. Remember, I, I beginning of the season, I was like, this is it. He's taking the leap. He's going to be elite. You predicted him to be MVP. I, in the running. <laughs> I said in the running. Yeah. And uh, but I but I'm not I'm not going to sit here and, and deny what my eyes are telling me. Yes, all season long. And, and, and I know he was injured, guys. But the problem is, he's had the same issues now for four years. And he, if anybody who uses the injury as an excuse for Baker, I, you got to dismiss it immediately because he wouldn't use it as an excuse. Baker every week said injuries not hampering me. I'm fine. And then he'd go out there, and get his butt kicked, and suck for a whole game. And then the press conference would say, "Oh, I'm just really banged up." Which is it, dude? Which is it? Is it bothering you or not? Well, and explain the Chargers game to me then. Mm-hmm. Yep, he must have just the pain pills must have been extra strong that game. <laughs> you know, explain the Bengals after yeah. the Bengals game when Odell got released and we killed him, and everybody was like, "See." Yeah. It was Odell's fault. Look how good Baker is. And I remember I, I got on here and said, calm down. I know. You did. And people said I was a hater. And then how good was our offense the rest of the year? Not very. So relax, guys. We're going to be all right. Um, I think the Browns, even though it's been a Twitter crap storm, honestly, our offseason hasn't been that bad so far. We upgrade. We added Winovich. We signed a special teams guy who's going to help. We re-signed our starting linebacker. We re-signed a swing tackle. We added a good wide receiver. We freed up $30 million in cap space so we can go make more moves. Clowney still might be back. We're going to be fine. Yep. Browns aren't done. Just I think we're just getting started, honestly. I believe that, too. These guys, and if you, got, like, if you don't like me, that's fine. Nathan Zagura is pretty well respected, <laughs> and even he's on Twitter saying, guys, relax. This front office has a plan and a process, and they know what they're doing. That's the one thing. I, I've seen a lot of this uh, anti-Andrew Barry stuff recently. Yeah, but five days ago, he was a genius, if you remember. I, I'm going to go on the last. Now, we've gotten, now, if it was just one year, I would be skeptical. It's been two straight season, off seasons of very smart, very calculated moves by Andrew Barry bringing in the right players at the right positions for the right prices, and it's worked out on the field. Give him a break, guys. He's, it's going to be okay. 